All right, hello everyone. Uh, in this problem, we are going to be calculating detention time. Remember that detention time just tells us how long uh, a water molecule spends it in any given part of any process or any point. Uh, so we could be looking about how much water, how much time water is spending in a certain reservoir, in a certain tank, in a certain water pipe. In this example, we're going to be looking at treatment plant. So we're going to be looking at conventional water treatment plant. This plant in particular is treating an average of 12.2 MGD. Remember that MGD is million gallons per day. This water is being treated by four different clarifiers, except one of these clarifiers is offline for maintenance. So in this example, we're going to be treating this entire flow by three different clarifiers. Now remember, before water can get to these clarifiers, in conventional water treatment, we've gone through pretreatment. Right? If we're pulling this water from a reservoir, let's say we're screening out all the debris. Then we're sending this water off and into our first really part of our, our treatment, or our second step as we refer to it after pretreatment, is coagulation. So remember, we're adding a coagulant. Say we're adding alum or aluminum sulfate. We are rapidly mixing that up. All right, remember that adding that coagulant is helping to neutralize the charge of the particles in our water so that we then move that water to the next phase called flocculation. Remember during flocculation is now we're just slowly mixing that water. These particles that now have a neutral charge are now able to stick to each other. And as they stick to each other, they become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, similar to like a snowball. So now we've got these nice big particles of flock forming in our water. We're sending it to the next phase of water treatment, which is going to be to our clarifiers. Remember our sedimentation tanks, sedimentation basins, clarifiers, it all means the same thing. Then what we're going to be doing is now we're just going to slow that water down. As that water slows down, what happens to those big, big particles? They all start to then sink out of the water. Right? That's why we call it a clarifier, because we're clarifying the water. So. Water is now at our clarifiers. We want to know how much time is water spending at each one of these clarifiers. So in order to do that, what do we need? We need the formula for detention time, which as we know is going to be volume divided by flow. Now it's really important in this detention time formula that your volume and flow units match. That's the only way we're left with time. So if I'm given volume in gallons, then I'm going to want my flow in, say, gallons per minute. This allows gallons to cancel out, so what am I left with? I'm left with just minutes. It would be the same thing if I was given volume in, say, cubic feet. I want my flow to be in cubic feet, say, per second, so that my cubic feet are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with seconds. Right? It's really important. Your units must line up so they cancel out to be left with time. Okay, so let's see what we got. We need volume. We're not directly given it, but we can figure it out pretty easily. And we've got our flow. Now, we need to consider the fact that there are three clarifiers treating a total flow of 12.2 million gallons per day. So a couple different ways to do this problem. Whichever way your brain thinks about it best to make the most sense to you is what you should go with. In this example, I'm going to say that, you know what, one clarifier is treating a third of that total flow. The other way to do it would be to think about three clarifiers are treating that total flow. So either way, you're going to have to take into account um, a factor of three at some point. So I'm going to say that my volume of one clarifier is 0.25 million gallons. Remember that that's going to look like 250,000 gallons. All right, that's my volume. And that volume is being treated by just a third of that flow. So let's look at that real quick. If my Q is equal to 12,200,000 gallons per day, well, I need to be able to divide this by a three because that's how much flow is going into just one of those. So let's look at that. 12,200,000. Make sure your zeros line up. It's a whole bunch of zeros. Divided by three, and that's going to give me a flow rate of four zero. A whole bunch of sixes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Point, and it's six, 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 on and on and on. We'll just say point six seven. All right, and make sure your number makes sense. So what are we looking at? We're looking at four million sixty-six thousand, so on. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, right? If I've got twelve, I divide by three, I should be left with four. Just do a sense check. Okay, makes sense. Now, this unit here, gallon per day, and gallons, the gallons are going to match. It's going to work out. 
But if my flow is, is based on the unit of time of being days, then my answer here at the end is going to be in days. And we know that the detention time in our sedimentation tanks is not going to be anywhere near a full day. Right? If it is, our, our process is way too slow. We're not going to be treating nearly enough water. So I'm actually going to take this gallon per day. I'm going to convert that to gallons per minute. Right? So how do we do this? Well, we need to remember that in order to get rid of days and our conversion factor, is days going to go up top or down below? It's going to go up top days. I'm trying to get to minutes, right? I look at my handy dandy conversion sheet from distribution or treatment. I see 1,440 minutes in a single day. This is going to cancel out my days. I'm going to be left with gallons per minute. So now I take the 4,066,000. I'm going to divide that by 1440. And I'm going to get to much more manageable number. Let's just say 2,824 gallons per minute or GPM. Right? So this now is the flow that I'm going to plug in for here. So now I've got my 2,824 gallons per minute. I look at my detention time formula. Gallons will cancel out with gallons. So what is it? What is 250,000 divided by this 2824? I get a total of 88.5. And what are my units? Minutes. So just over an hour, almost an hour and a half. So this is the amount of time, this is the tension time, of how much time water spends in any one of my given clarifiers or just do it all during the sedimentation process. So to recap real quick, we wanted to know detention time. We know the formula for detention, detention time is volume divided by flow. I'm given a total plant flow of 12.2 MGD or million gallons per day. That's my average flow. I'm treating that flow in three different clarifiers. They're all 0.25 million gallons, or in other words, 250,000 gallons. We went with the route of one of these clarifiers treats a third of the total flow, right? So this is a third of the flow. This is the amount of water going through just that clarifier. We converted from gallon per day to gallon per minute by dividing by 1440. Then we plug this back into our formula. So now we just did volume divided by flow, and we were left with minutes just over an hour remember the other way to do this problem would be to say all three of these clarifiers so then i would do 750,000 gallons divided by my total flow i would skip this step so the difference is instead of dividing the flow by three you're multiplying that volume by three either way you're, you're accounting for a factor of three and so that is the amount of time water is spending in our sedimentation tanks now now, we could also use detention time and find out how much time is water spending in our flocculation basin. How much time is water spending in our chlorine contact basin? These are all very important points when it comes to how much water we're treating and at what efficiencies we're treating the water.